Hi, Ravi Kiran. Thank you so much for giving us your time. For the viewers, may we request you to please share your journey and your story in your own words? Sure. I'm glad to be here and share my uh, experience. Uh, my undergraduate degree was a bachelor's in engineering and I immediately did a, did a postgraduate diploma in management. Uh, and I did not work before the MBA. So I think uh, after the MBA, I got my first job. And I think about uh, two and a half, three years into that, um, I realized that I needed a better skill set in order to grow in that particular profile. Um, and that motivated me to apply to a master's degree in the US. I saw that my peer group in the firm that I was working in at that time, uh, a lot of my peer group and my seniors had a pretty quantitative background for uh, finance and risk management. And uh, I think I wanted to get the same background as well. So that was my motivation to apply to a master's degree in quantitative finance in the United States. I think most of the top schools are in the United States right now. I applied. Uh, I think I went through the entire process of uh, GRE and SOPs and recommendations and everything. And um, I think uh, I spent about two years uh, for my master's degree there. And um, I came back to the industry, uh, I think, with a better skill set. To, yeah, I think in, in I'm able to perform uh, far better than what I was and I think the master's degree did make a pretty good difference to the long term of my in, in the long term for my career. So I think that's pretty much in short uh, my journey so far. Oh, it's actually quite inspiring. So in your opinion, what are a few factors or actions you took that made all the difference? I think at the time when I was preparing to apply, I... Uh, I realized that uh, some of my peers from college had already finished their master's in the US. I reached out to alumni of my target schools on LinkedIn. Uh, I spoke to them. I spoke to my peers who had already graduated and were in the industry in the US. Uh, I think this was very uh, this was a very key factor for me to set realistic expectations on what schools I can uh, get into, uh, what schools, what to expect from a master's program and what to expect after the program as well in terms of uh, career. Uh, so this was very key. Uh, it helped me uh, structure my SOPs better. It helped me structure my uh, uh, my entire application process was set on very realistic uh, uh, tar- expectations and targets. So uh, I think uh, the key is definitely reach out to alumni on LinkedIn, reach out to uh, people who've been through the process and uh, spend as much time as you can understanding uh, what are, what, 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 uh, what makes uh, you different from the rest of the applicant pool and uh, try and highlight that in your application. I think that's uh, that's key. All right. Okay. So going back to your preparation phase, uh, what were the main resources that you used and what advice will you give to the future candidates? I think in terms of GRE, uh, definitely I, I just used uh, Barron's. I think probably Barron's is still the best source for uh, at least for the English part of GRE. And for in terms of application process, yeah, definitely uh, start well ahead in time because uh, more often than not, uh, professors will uh, not give you a recommendation till the last minute. Right. Uh, have uh, backups in case one professor does not ensure that you have the time to change that in your profile in the application and get a recommendation from another professor. Uh, get a recommendation from another manager if uh, that uh, ensure that these are people who know you well and know like what is your uh, what is the skill set that you're bringing to the table and why should you be applying I was lucky to get a recommendation from one of my managers uh, when I was working and he was from the same school that I was applying to so that made a very big difference I think that uh, these are key factors I would The earlier you prepare, you have time to go through options like these. Each application has to be personalized. You cannot have a similar SOP for every school that you're applying because you have to focus on uh, what is that particular school specialization, uh, its location, what, what what do the professors in that school specialize in, right? So you have to ensure that these things align Uh, in a lot of ways. This is not really very different from a job search. So I would suggest these things essentially for someone who is just starting out. All right. Okay. I'm sure your suggestion is actually going to help a lot of students. So would you like to describe your interview experience with the school? I think for a quantitative finance master's, there were these uh, virtual interviews where uh, you get a question on the screen and uh, it it was not a live face-to-face interview or something. So it was uh, very uh, some questions like basic behavioral questions. Can you describe a challenge that you faced and how do you overcome it? These sort of things. Uh, So I did not really have have an in-depth interview. It was more more like a, a base 
basic interview. So, all right. So, uh, can you tell us more about your master's program, like your experience during the two years? So, I went to Rutgers Business School in New York, New Jersey. Uh, we, uh, my specialization or my focus was on quantitative finance. I think the program was uh, well, was a good balance between uh, a hardcore quantitative skill set that is required in the industry and also. Uh, largely due to some uh, uh, professors who were already worked in the industry and were teaching. So as practitioners, uh, they brought in a lot of the soft skills aspect to the program as well. So as opposed to a purely quantitative or a mathematical degree, we had a good balance between uh, what do we need to align ourselves to the industry and also what are the core quantitative skill sets that are required. So uh, that was one very uh, salient feature uh, of the program. Uh, we had a fairly uh, few few fairly intensive mathematical courses uh, and some programming courses, and uh, there were uh, courses which we picked as electives, which were extremely current in the industry. Uh, so this balance uh, was uh, pretty good. Uh, it helped uh, networking with your professors uh, helped, and it actually got me my internship, which eventually landed me my first job. So that was uh, that was a very good uh, thing to come out of the uh, program. You have a very good peer group, which uh, which is a blend of both uh, people who are fresh uh, and who are from elite universities in both in India and China, and even in the US. Uh, so I mean, you have peers who are solving mathematical problems faster than the professor, and then uh, you have someone who has come from after working like for eight years and uh, he does programming better than the professor. So. So you have this very amazing peer group and it's a pretty good learning experience uh, from all of them. So this is definitely, I would recommend someone to, uh, your learning is not just in the classroom from the Blackboard, but it is happening around you from your peer group, from the people you interact with, uh, from the networking events you go to. So these are all pretty important. Uh, for me, location was a good, I think it was a great plus point because um, we were very close to New York City and uh, it gave us the chance to attend a lot of industry networking events. Mm-hmm. And so and that invariably translates to more uh, more channels for you to apply to jobs uh, eventually after your master's program so yeah i think this was a pretty good uh, master's experience uh, overall right quite a wholesome experience i would say so would you like to share more about your job search experience during the master's program and what tips will you give to the future candidates so job search is a fairly frustrating process especially if you're in the united states um, and i'm sure it would be uh, similar even across europe or any other country uh, you don't obviously i'm sure everyone knows you don't go in expecting something like a placement uh, that is not what happens and uh, you have to network, network, network as much as you can. Uh, You have to be very focused in your applications. You have to send in as many applications as you can. But again, just like uh, sending out your university applications, it should not be something which is just the same resume and the same cover letter going everywhere. So it should not be the same, uh, you know, you try and customize your cover letters uh, to what is uh, the role that you're applying to. Uh, speak to people who are already working there. Uh, you, If you send a LinkedIn cold call to like 50 people, maybe one would respond. So it it's a, it's a fairly frustrating process. You've got to be patient. In my case, uh, I was lucky because I got recommended to an internship by a professor. And uh, that was purely on the basis of a cover letter, which I had written telling her like, uh, why is this a good role for me and what I would be learning out of it and what can I contribute. So that internship eventually translated to a first job opportunity for me uh, right after my master's degree. So I think, um, yeah, there is no one with whom, from whom you would not uh, get a good, you know, you, you, you would not get a good connection. It is important that you speak to as many people as you can understand the industry that you're applying to. Uh, and you need to have this in mind even before you begin your applications, right? You ha- I feel like, I mean, that's my opinion. You have to be, you have to have a clear perception of uh, why you're going there uh, because you are taking on a significant amount of student debt. Uh, so it's important that uh, you realize uh, what courses are you going to take and you prepare for them early on. Um, 
which which kind of industry and companies are you targeting once you graduate uh, and i'm sure uh, like everyone going through this process would uh, have a similar experience and you have to be really patient with your job search essentially apply as many places as you can uh, your internship is usually the best chance that you have uh, for a full time job offer but even if that doesn't work out that's fine you have to be a little patient uh, there are people in my peer group who probably received offers like 3 or 6 months after they graduated so it's very difficult to see your peers moving ahead and probably you not having uh, a leg up yet uh, but uh, i guess it's important to stay mentally strong uh, because uh, when you finally land that role you will realize that it is a perfect fit and you were there for a reason uh, you were probably waiting for that role to come by you and that's the reason it took you a while so stay strong and uh, keep applying and uh, you will i think eventually everyone uh, gets to land their uh, dream role right and all is well that ends well i think yeah yeah, yeah. i mean there's there's no dearth of opportunities uh, because they will not they, they, like i said there's no concept of placement so you really have to go and search for uh, uh, opportunities yes that's true so can you please tell us more about your post masters journey and like how did the entire pre application experience and your masters journey contribute to your growth post your masters so the skill set that we picked up during the masters has really helped make my mark on this job compared to others in my peer group uh so it could be like a simple programming that has helped me automate a few reports and save time Uh, for uh, myself and my managers uh something where we are creating efficiency something where we are uh, challenging uh, the desk in terms of okay why are you doing this trade uh, uh you know so we are where we are measuring the risk so these are all skill sets that i've directly picked up from my masters and uh, uh it's 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 very helpful uh because i know that had i not done that masters degree i wouldn't be doing as well in the same role um and it would have taken me probably a few more years to get to this uh, position so uh, that way the masters has uh, degree has really helped um and it it has opened up a lot of doors for me uh, so right now the job market is really fluid and um i think i i have observed that i keep getting a lot more recruiter calls for certain profiles quantitative profiles than uh some of my peers who don't have a uh, quantitative masters degree so this uh aspect is like really um uh, useful uh from my masters degree uh and uh, i think uh, the entire process where you uh, apply in in time for you you meet the application deadlines you go through to professors uh, to get your recommendations to you research and you write a statement of purpose and then the process wherein you go through the masters degree you pick up a new skill set and you go through a job search process so these things make you resilient and uh, they also teach you how to manage your time and uh, i think uh, this is definitely a good thing uh, i think uh, uh, everyone who goes through this journey eventually comes out as um, better prepared for uh, the corporate world and also in terms of your uh, long term career so yeah i think it's a uh, it's a great experience that everyone who is interested should should experience it so that's my two cents that's that's amazing and it's quite interesting so according to you what are a few common mistakes that all the applicants who are planning to do masters in quantitative finance should avoid i think there is a perception like uh, uh, to apply probably only to the top 5 schools or only to the top 10 schools um but the thing is these are all pretty expensive right mm-hmm. the top so they are expensive programs uh so it is but uh, you realize that there are uh, other good schools which are probably not as expensive they are in a little off beat locations like they are not in new york uh, right but graduates from that school are also doing equally well uh so it's uh, i think that was one mistake that i did and i i really focused only on the location only on the brand name uh, though i think it turned out well but um it it might not be the same for everyone because your goals from a masters program could be different from mine uh and uh, it it's important that you research you exactly understand what is the financial commitment you're putting through uh because you're also not going to earn for two years 
so uh, get this uh, get get all these numbers in place understand what is it that you can uh, commit financially what is it what is it that you cannot uh, so apply in a very targeted fashion there are schools which are not exactly in the most hot spot locations like new york or chicago but they they give you equally good skill sets and um, even if it takes you like probably 3 months after you graduate to find a job it is worth it not starting off your career with such a huge student but student debt burden uh, so keep this in mind clearly that um, uh, it's not about the two years and the uh, you know what 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 school you're going to it is also about what skill sets you're picking up and how much can you put aside for student debt through the rest of your career so uh, this is a good i mean uh, this is something that i would want every applicant to clearly understand uh, the, the other thing is obviously uh, for quantitative finance um, uh, it which is as good uh, generally for any other program that you are applying to um, please do not like uh, have the same sop the same recommendations going through uh the same application the same sort of interview going through to every school each school has its own spe- uh, unique specialization uh some schools are heavily focused on programming some schools are heavily focused on mathematics some schools are um like uh, fo- uh, are in a business they are some programs are based out of business school so the sop that you would write to a quant finance program based out of a business school is very different from an sop you would write to a quant finance based out of a mathematics uh, college right so uh, you have to be very uh, clear on uh, what are you putting in your sop that uh, goes to each of these two distinctly uh, uh, two distinct programs uh, with a very distinct end result right uh, yeah, you would see that more often than not people who go to pure mathematics colleges would go on for a phd rather than end up in the industry uh, whereas those who are applying to a, a quant finance program in a business school would more often than not uh, end up in the industry rather than go for a phd so this distinction is very important to make at the time of application itself okay. uh, so i think yeah i mean uh, this pretty much covers what i this is advice that i would have known uh, i would have liked to have at the time when i was applying so yeah <laughs> that's okay. yeah that's actually very nice of you to jot down all the pointers and help out the students so what would be your final message to all the viewers and all the future aspirants watching this video i think it's pretty much like uh, it's a very enriching experience to do a masters in a country very different from what you grew up in a culture very different from uh, what you are used to so it's always important that you make the best out of it uh, it's very busy uh, masters degree program you have a lot of assignments coming uh, your way you have a lot of uh, and you have to balance this with things like uh, oh uh, i need should i cook or should i order in because ordering in is a little more expense obviously and you're living on a student budget whereas if you cook i mean you've got to do the dishes as well right so <laughs> so balancing this uh, balancing a job search balancing your assignments balancing your classes um, and also finding time to go out over the weekends or uh, meet someone new so these are all like to have the entire experience uh, do not be stressed i think uh, things always work out in the end and uh, making this calculation of like uh, what is it that i can afford and what is it that i cannot helps you not stress out during the those two years of your masters program having a very clear cut uh, understanding of uh, what are, what are the jobs that i can apply to what is it that i want out of my masters degree again also ensures that you're not very stressed through that period it's 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 impossible that you do an elective from data science you do an elective from pure mathematics you do a business elective so it's impossible to have so many specializations and focus areas so it's it's impossible that you're applying to consulting you're applying to quant roles you're applying to uh, business client facing roles it's so it's it's impossible that you're applying to all of those so keep a very a uh, clear focus on what is it that you want and uh, i think uh, uh, that that reduces the stress and helps you uh, like have a good experience through those two years um, i think yeah that's pretty much all right all right okay thank you so much for giving all your suggestions and sharing your story with us and congratulations because i think your success story is actually an inspiration and it's amazing how far you have come so thank you so much for giving us your time ravi kiran it was great talking to you
Sure, sure. Uh, no worries. Thank you. Uh, and uh, good luck to everyone. Thank you so much.